Now this one is so everyone can sing with us. You all know the words and lyrics. No. Or the words. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see I want to see you, see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. at the First Presbyterian Church of Beacon, New York, where together we are bridging worlds, encountering God, and healing lives. I'm Gwen Watkins. I'm Gabriel McKee. I'm Anselm McKee. And whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever your background, we are glad you are with us, and we hope you find just what your soul needs today. This morning, we welcome Pastor Casey Carbone of First Presbyterian in Mayopac, who will share a message and communion with us. If you have a candle with you, we invite you to light it with us now as a reminder of the light of the risen Christ in all times and places. <laughs> Is it broken? There we go. Hold on. Got it. <laughs> Our opening song this morning is from Psalm 149. Praise the Lord! Sing to the Lord a new song, His praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its Maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their King. Let them praise His name with dancing, making melody to Him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Amen. Amen. Let us continue in a prayer of confession. O Lord our God, 
You call us to work for a world where all will be fed and have dignity, but we find ourselves distracted by our own desires. You call us to seek justice and peace, but we are satisfied with injustice and discord. You call us to bring liberty to the oppressed, but we do not insist on freedom for all. Forgive us, O Lord. Turn us to your will by the power of your Spirit, so that all may know your justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Amen. If you have water in a container, we invite you to pour the water with us as a reminder of the grace and power of baptism. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. you. We invite you to type your greetings of peace into the comment section. And you can also grab your shakers or any other noisemakers available and get ready to join our young friends as we sing the Gloria Patri Patri. Pottery? Pottery. Mm -hmm. The glory of pottery of our song of praise to the true and God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Good morning everybody as you can see this week here I am at the Hudson River this is Dennings Point and Levi and Asa and Clara and I just took a walk here this morning and you know what I was just sitting here enjoying this amazing view and it made me think about last week when we talked about going for a walk and finding things that remind you of God and you know what this place right here reminds me of God the beautiful Hudson River the mountains Storm King Mountain being here in the woods of Dennings Point Seeing all these huge rocks. I'm sitting on one right now. All of these things remind me of how awesome God is. That God created all of this beautiful stuff for us to enjoy. And you know what? I love even some of the little things that I find. Like when I go to the river, one of my favorite things to look for is sea glass. Now, sea glass is something you probably want to ask your mom or dad before you pick up. Because, well, I don't want you to get hurt. So sometimes I have here, this is not sea glass. This is a little bit sharp and I could probably cut my finger on it. But do you see this sharp piece of glass? If we leave it in the river for a long time, eventually you get this. This, now it might be hard to tell on the screen, but this is so smooth. I can run my finger all around it and it doesn't hurt at all. I love sea glass. It reminds me of how powerful God is. 
that God can use something like water, which we love to swim in and we drink. I mean, not the Hudson River water, we don't drink that. But water is something that is so important and something that we use in so many ways. And God can use water to take something sharp and make it into something smooth. And you know what? God does that in our own lives too. God is always using other people and other things to teach us new things about ourselves, to teach us lessons, to show us God's love and God's grace and forgiveness so that we can become new again. And when we know that forgiveness of Jesus, we can share that forgiveness and love with others. And so I just wanted to come here today and share with you this beautiful view here. I love it so, so much. And I'm so thankful that we get to live in such a beautiful place. Aren't you? So if you've taken that prayer walk, would you tell me about it? I still am waiting to hear. All right. Would you say a prayer with me? Dear God, Thank you for the awesome beauty that you have created. Thank you for the Hudson River. Thank you for our beautiful town and for the mountains and all these things. And thank you for how you use these things to show us your beauty and your grace. Help us to be transformed by your love so that we too can share your beauty and grace with others. Amen. The scripture reading for this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Listen now to God's word for us this morning. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, friends at First Presbyterian Church of Beacon. It's a pleasure to be able to worship with you this morning and to offer up a meditation. If you didn't know, actually, I preached at your church once before, maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, I was doing a neutral pulpit and then afterwards was called to serve as the pastor at the First Presbyterian Church of Mayopac. So it's a pleasure to be able to worship with you once again this morning. As you just heard the scripture reading from Matthew's Gospel, would you please uh, indulge me once again though in listening to the first verse of the reading that comes from Matthew 18 verse 15. So listen once again to this part from Scripture. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. Would you please pray with me? God, we ask that as we meditate upon your holy word, that your spirit may remind us of the ways in which you live and move among us, and the ways in which we are called to be a family, a community that reflects your love and life in the world. We pray this in your most holy name. Amen. 
So we hear Jesus this morning reminding those who had gathered around him, the disciples, that if you have a problem, go talk to the other person. Go talk to them. Which may seem like a novel idea, but it's one that we don't actually practice very well. As a Presbyterian, I've gotten used to living my life by a lot of different rules, a lot of different guidelines or ways to conduct yourself. But there's one guiding principle that I've always done my very best to make sure that I maintain it in how I do ministry and how our church does ministry. And that's, that's this rule, that we always name a name. No, I, I guess I should expand on that, and, and I, I'll give you an example, perhaps one that sounds familiar, perhaps one you've experienced. Imagine you're at a session meeting or some other kind of meeting, and you're gathered around the table, and as you're leading the meeting, someone raises their hand and says, you know what, I was talking to so-and-so, or I was talking to them about this, and, you know, they weren't really happy about what's going on. And when I say so-and-so or them, I mean these people don't name names. They just say something's wrong or that they're angry. And oftentimes what we find is that the people who are named don't actually have a problem. It's the person who is raising the issue that often has a problem, but they try and bring in other people to make it seem like it's a much bigger problem than what it is or to try and justify their reasons for being mad. We call this triangulation when we try to pit people against another, or we try to bring other people into this conflict that's going on. And in reality, this way of conflict management, this way of addressing the bigger issues that are going on, is not helpful. It often leads to a, an even greater for all the people who are involved. So we name names. We name what's wrong. We say who it is that we have a problem with or maybe feeling hurt by. And then we take the next step to bring about some kind of reconciliation, some kind of healing, if that's possible. Jesus is asking us to pursue such a course of action this morning in this reading from the gospel according to Matthew. And it's not something that comes as, a, as, a, as an instinct for us. We'd much rather blame other people to try and bring other people into the picture. But Jesus reminds us that living in a community of faith, living in a community in general, is a two-way street. You have people who may have hurt others with what they said or what they did. You have people who are on the receiving end as well. And this conversation of reconciliation, though, goes both ways, according to Jesus. It's why you go and you bring someone else as a witness or as, as a neutral third party. But it starts with having a conversation. It starts with understanding or asking the question of why and how did this all start with, or how did it all start to begin with? All we have to do is look around to see how much conflict there is in our world today. Not even on a national level, but on a local level as well. I think one of the important things for us to remember as we head into the fall, as we head into another election cycle, is to define what kind of person we are going to be. How are we going to handle conflict when we see it? 
as we scroll through our newsfeed, as we want to tear out our hair at what we see other people posting, how are we going to handle that? How are we going to handle disagreements? How are we going to address issues that are plaguing our environment? How are we going to address racial injustice and oppression? How are we going to fix all these things? Together, of course, but how we go about doing it is really left to us as well. An eye for an eye doesn't work. So perhaps we can give what Jesus is saying a try. And there'll be some things along the way which we really want to try and fix, but we just can't. There'll be people who we want or don't want to have a healing moment with or have reconciliation with. And in those cases, Jesus says, there are just some things that we can leave in the hands of God. There's some things that we can leave with God who is in control of the stars, the whirling planets, and that's okay. Each of us have a sphere of our own influence, and sometimes when we feel as though we're just overwhelmed, we can put off some of those moments and give them over to God. The question for us this morning, as I said before, is when we are in these moments where we are not sure how we're going to live in community with one another, that it's often better to have those conversations head on in a way that's loving, in a way that's compassionate and empathetic, but in a way where we don't ignore the core of the conflict, the core of the issue at hand. Because if we do, we know what the consequences are. As Dr. King once said, we don't want our actions or our words to contribute to a night already devoid of stars. As we go about living in community, let us build up one another. Let us continue to strive to be the community of faith God has called us to be. One in which we can have disagreements, one in which we might not see eye to eye, but one at which at the end of the day we can still say we did our best to live as the people God has called us to be. Setting an example of hope, of love, in which we add then back into the night the void of stars, stars of hope, Stars that radiate hope and love and compassion. All the good things that come from God. Things in which we are called to share and to live out in our daily lives as hard as it may be, as countercultural as it may be. So let us go out, friends, into the world. Being willing to engage in these hard conversations Knowing, though, that the work we do contributes to the growing family which God has called us to be a part of. Thanks be to God. Amen. If I could tell the world just one thing it would be they are all okay And not to worry Cause worry's wasteful and useless In times like these I won't be made useless Won't be idle with despair Gather myself around my faith The light's the darkness most fear And my hands are small, I know but they're not yours, they are my own No, they're not yours, they are my own And I am never broken Poverty stole your golden shoes But it 
didn't steal your laughter And heartache came to visit me But I knew it wasn't ever after We will fight, not out of spite Someone must stand up for what's right Cause where there's a man who has no voice There our shall go singing My hands are small, I know But they're not yours, they are my own No, they're not yours, they are my own And I am never broken In the end, only kindness matters I will get down on my knees And I will pray I will get down on my knees And I will pray I will get down on my knees I will pray My hands are small, I know But they're not yours, they are my own But they're not yours, they are my own And I am never broken We are never broken We are God's eyes, God's hand, God's heart, we are God's eyes, God's hand, we are God's mind, God's eyes, we are God's hand. Friends, we gather this day now to partake of the supper that was given to us by Christ Jesus. A supper where Christ sat down at table with his disciples and they shared a meal. They ate and drank and talked with one another. Christ still provides a table for us today to gather around, even if it is virtual. A table where all are welcome regardless of their skin, their race, their heritage, their cultural identity, their sexuality. Whatever it is that we try to use to separate ourselves, Christ tears those things down and welcomes us as we are and asks us to welcome each other as well. This is a table that is not just the Presbyterian table. It is a table where people from north, south, east, and west will come to be together with one another, to sit at table and commune with each other. Everyone who thirsts comes to the waters. Let those who are hungry and thirsty come and eat. For God will satisfy their souls with a rich feast a rich feast, and we will bless the Lord as long as we live. Friends, the Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God, our Creator and Redeemer. For in your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You formed us in your image and love and serve you. When we were slaves in Egypt, you freed us and led us through the waters of the sea. You fed us with heavenly food in the wilderness and satisfied our thirst from the desert springs. On a holy mountain you gave us your law and guide us in your way. Through the waters of Jordan, you led us into the land of your promise, and you sustained us in times of trial. You spoke, us, you spoke to us through prophets, calling us to turn from our willful ways. 
to new obedience and righteousness. You sent your only Son to be the way to eternal life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with the choir of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing the glory of your holy name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. In the bread we break and the cup we bless, may the communion of the body and blood of Christ be with us. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in Christ's name, that we may be one in ministry in every time and place, and that this bread is Christ's body for us as we go out into the world to be a living witness. Help us, O God, to see the ways in which we have fallen short, the ways that we have not honored the image that dwells inside each and every one of us. Forgive us for the times we have failed to call out acts of racism and oppression and prejudice, for the times we have neglected our neighbor because of their cultural upbringing or their sexual identity. Forgive us for the ways that we have failed to love our neighbor. Guide us, O oh God, through these trying times, through the desert of life. Quench our thirst with the living waters. Satisfy our hunger with the bread of heaven. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection. And with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the work of all your saints, those past and present and those who are to come, those who with their hands provide healing, those who with their minds and their mouths seek out wisdom and justice. We pray, O oh Lord, on this day for the many aches and pains and illness that plague our world today, for the disease of COVID-19, but for also the disease that we wrestle with, the disease of racism and hate. The things that impact not only our bodies, but our souls and our minds. And pray that your spirit come and dwell among us, that it may alleviate these pains, that it may give us the strength and courage to stand against them, to fight against them, to be the living witness you have called us to be. Almighty God, as we head into another season, may you be with all those who are struggling to find what is next, whether it be educators, those who are searching for jobs, those who are in a position where they're not sure of what will happen next. For those who continue to protect us and serve us, who watch over our communities. And we pray for those, O oh God, who continue to provide leadership in our churches, our synagogues, our houses of worship, our towns, our state, and our world. We lift these things up to you, O oh God. And as our Savior Christ taught us to pray, we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, that night when Christ was with his disciples, he took the cup and he, as he poured it, he said, this cup represents 
the sign of the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink from it, do this in remembrance of me. And in a like manner, he took the bread and as he broke it, he said, this bread represents my body broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. May these simple elements of bread and cup feed us with the spiritual nourishment we need. May they remind us of our calling and our purpose to be the people of God in every time and place. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us partake of them with joy and thanksgiving. Good morning, First Presby community. My name is Jen Cartlow, and I'm the worship coordinator for First Presbyterian. When we began online worship back in March, I never thought that here we would be in September still doing online worship. And I definitely never thought that we would still be doing online worship during a pandemic without a pastor. So I just wanted to talk with you this morning about a few things with worship. First, I just want to say a huge thank you to all the volunteers who have helped over the past six months in creating a worship experience online, from musicians to readers to liturgists to our video editors to our guest preachers and those offering testimonies. Thank you so much for offering your heart and your soul and your time and your energy into creating an online worship experience for so many of us. And also to those of you who have just been watching the past six months, I have to say a huge thank you for your grace and your patience for these last six months as we have muddled through and figured out new ways to worship with our First Presbyterian community. Second, I want to let you know that I would love to hear any feedback that you may have about our online worship. Since I don't see us ending our online worship anytime soon, I would love to hear from you. What things do you love about our online worship? 
What would you like to see more of in our online worship? What are some things that you miss from our gatherings here? Please feel free to reach out and let me know any feedback that you would like to offer. And third, I wanted to put out a call for more faces, for more volunteers. Is there a way that you would like to contribute to our worship services? Please let me know. We would love to have more faces involved with worship. And if using a recording device is kind of challenging or intimidating to you, please reach out anyway, because I would be happy to work with you with that in order to help you volunteer and offer your gifts. If you would like to contact me about anything um, with worship, you can contact me on Facebook. You can send an email to office at beaconpresbychurch.org. Or you can even leave a voicemail on our church uh, phone. And you can find all of that information in the text of this video. So thank you again for the way that this community has come together in these last six months. And I pray that we continue to reach out to one another, that we worship with one another online, and hopefully someday, someday soon, we'll be back here together. Thank you for joining us in worship today. Your presence and support are a gift to this congregation. If you are in need of prayer, or if there's any other way we can be of assistance, please email us at our new email address, office at beaconpresbychurch.org. If you would like to support the ongoing ministry of First Presbyterian Church, you can send a check to the address at the bottom of the screen, or give an online contribution through our website, beaconpresbychurch.org. We are so grateful for all the ways you have supported First Presby through this pandemic, and we thank you for continuing that support as we head into the fall. Virtual Coffee Hour will be held today at 11 a.m. following worship. You should have received the Zoom link in the midweek message, but if you missed it, please message or email us, and we'll get you the link right away. We thank Pastor Casey Carbone for sharing his gifts with us today. Next week, we will hear from Elder Steve Partlow, and in two weeks, we will welcome Reverend Susan DeGeorge from the Hudson River Presbytery. And now, may you be at peace wherever you are. Remember those who are out in the world. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And wherever you are, may the love of God, the faith of the risen Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you, now and forever. And let all God's people say, Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear?
appear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? Through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. This I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me.